Hi Stampin' Friends, this is Deb Crowley from Deb's Daubers from Urbandale, Iowa and I'm happy to be with you today. I'm going to be sharing some ideas for projects using the brand new Nature's Print Suite. It's found on page 90 of the catalog, the brand new catalog that you should have received or can receive from your demo. And what attracted to me this were these gorgeous, gorgeous papers, the navy colors that are just beautiful. I'm going to turn my camera down so you can see what's, what's in this suite. You will get, if you buy the whole thing, you get the paper, which is just gorgeous paper. Look at this. One side is, I don't know if you can really tell, one side is kind of uh, navy, blueberry, blue colors and the other side are tan tan colors and I've used a bit of it but here's some samples of the other one side and the other side as you know with Stampin' Up you get beautiful sides two sides to choose from on everything and there's a sheet here. I've used part of that for a card. I'll show you later, but isn't that pretty? Pretty blue on the other side. And then a, a model blue with stripes. So that comes with the, if you get the bundle, as well as the Stampin' Up! the stamps and the magnets. I always put mine together on a magnetic piece inside my case so that I have them together. But uh, you'll get all of that with, with the set, as well as the embossing folder. This embossing folder is really pretty, and I'll show you a card that we've done with that, but it's ferns, if you can tell that. But today, rather than cards, I'm going to make a demonstrate a different project that you can do with this beautiful paper. And what we will need for this project, so I'm going to suck this here, see if you can can read that. We're going to be using one 12 by 12 sheet of DSP. We're going to cut it in half so it's six inches and then we're going to cut off an inch on each of those sides. So I'm going to bring it down here and cut an inch off of that one and this one. So what you will need for this project, you will need two pieces of coordinating cardstock, you will need um, four brads, tear and tape, I have some thick tear and tape here, and scissors, and a hole punch, and some brads. Any brads you've got that will be decorative you will want four of those. So what I've done, I've cut my designer series paper in half, cut off an inch on each side, and six inches so that it ends up like this. We're gonna tape that together in a minute. The other pieces that you're going to need are um, a base that's going to be 11 by seven inches, and we're going to score this at two inches on each side. And then we're going to need strips. We're going to need two of the inch and a half by 11. The nice thing is you don't have to cut off any off the edge of this. Our pizza is 11 inches, so you just cut off one and a half inches. And one. you're going to have one and a half inch left after you cut this one into an 11, um, 11 by 7. You're going to have the right amount there. So you just need one more one and a half inch strip. You need two one inch by 11 and then two half inch by 11. So you've got a half, one, one and a half, and then one uh, 11 by 7. So let's get started. We're going to start with our 11 by 7. We're going to score it. Pull out your scoring tool, whichever that may be, whether it be on your uh, cutting tool or your scanning board. And we're going to cut, going to score two inches 
on each side. So it's easier for me just to turn it around rather than to figure out two inches from whatever. Nice and easy. And this will give us a pretty sturdy base. This is going to be the base of what we're doing. And just fold it. I didn't bring my bowl, bone folder over here, but it's nice to have a good solid bone folder. What we're making is just the bottom part of a box. So you see it's all two inches around folded. And we're going to cut on one side each edge up to the crease. should look like this. See what we're going for? We're going to be taping that together so we end up with a base like this. Okay? Now I prefer taping, putting the sticky tape on this side and, and taping it to the outside. Because when we're finished, the inside will be what we see. So I got some really sticky tear and tape here. If you have the thinner tape, you might want to use two pieces. This is kind of thick, so I think I can get by with one. On each corner. So how I find the best way to do this is to lift up this piece and then get it right, put the fold right up to my edge and then turn it in. That gives you a nice square, square edge. Take the rest of these off and do the same thing on each corner. Okay, corner number two, up to the edge, flip it around, that up, up to the edge, flip it around, up to the edge, flip it around. So we've got a nice solid square box. It's going to be our base. The next thing we're going to do is take our designer series paper. You have to decide which side you want to be on the outside. One will be on the outside and one will be on the inside. We're making kind of a tote bag. So I want the tan to be inside. So I'm going to put a piece of sticky tape down here and I'm going to adhere it together. I just need one, one piece here. Just kind of evenly overlap there, about a half inch, does it? So you end up with one long piece. We're going to do this with our cardstock pieces too, two of our cardstock sets. Then the next thing we're going to do is turn this piece over and we're going to take a piece of tear and tape and right along the bottom on the inside, wherever you want to show on the inside, put your tear and tape down. Make sure it's nice and flat against that. We're also going to put a strip right along the edge. Not right, not over top of the bottom, just, just about down to the bottom of it though. So it looks something like, something like this. Okay. We're going to start, we're going to wrap it around our box. So you want your box to sit up sideways. This is going to be, uh, this is the idea, it's going to wrap it around like this. 
Okay. So what you want to do is take off the bottom only. Don't worry about this strip yet. Just take off the bottom piece of tape and start, I'm going to start in the middle of my edge so my like this. Okay. Just kind of wrap it around there very carefully. Wrap it around the bottom edge of your box. This tape is really sticky so once it sticks it's it's on there. You're not going to change your mind about it. Don't worry if it's a little off kilter. It'll get covered up. So here we go. Right around the bottom half of the box. Adjust it there a little bit. Then when you get around, then you can take off that side piece. And tape it all together. So you have, this is what you end up with. Now, we're going to add some, some bands around this and so forth. There's two ways you can do this. You can leave it round like this or you can kind of tuck those in and square it off to make kind of a square square tote too, whichever you'd like to do. For now I'm just going to leave it like that. Then the next thing you want to do is take these two pieces for the bottom, the inch and a half strips. Let's see if I can leave that there so you can still see it. If you have a decorative uh, scissor or something that you'd like to use on the bottom, you might want to grab that. You're going to take and put a little piece of tear and tape. You can also use um, die, die, um, thinlet edges, that kind of thing, if you want to run it through your cutter several times. So I'm going to go grab a pair of. So I'm going to take my scissors and just trim along the edge. You can use whatever design you want. There's multiple, multiple ways you could do this. It's just going to give a decorative edge and some strength to the bottom of your tote. Once you get that all done, again, we're going to use our tear and tape and put a strip all the way across the bottom. This tape is so sticky. It's a little, little wider than the tear and tape we get from Stampin' Up, but it's what I had in stock, so that's what I'm using. Okay. It's along the bottom there. And again, we're going to take off that piece and we're going to start around our bottom. You can start on the, um, the edge if you want to, like you did with the uh, other edge. Start and then put it right along the bottom of your tote. little overlap on the end and that's okay. A little more strength. So there you've got a decorative piece on the bottom. Then you're going to take this half inch piece and do the same exact thing. Tape it together. And really there's so many ways you can 
edit this to look different. You could make a, a wider strip for around the top rim. You could make a, another decorative strip if you want to, trim it, make it wider, make it skinnier. Okay, this is half inch tape so it fits right nicely right across there. take the strip off and start at our inch and wrap her around. Just kind of try not to get it to stick to anything. <laughs> Other paper <laughs> makes a mess. So just kind of Feel your way around the edge to make it even on top. Wrap her around. You can also um, figure out the dimensions and make this box any size smaller. It's about as large as it can get with the paper that we're using, but you can make, make smaller ones. Just start with, with your bottom box, measure your bottom box, how, you want that to, how large you want that to be, and then measure around it for your size of the paper that you need. Okay, so here we are so far. Inside there, I got a little my tape showing. Tuck that in. Okay, now we're going to do the handle. So that is the one-inch strips. So what we're going to do is we're going to score those strips a half inch down the middle. Only, don't go quite to the end, maybe about an inch from the end, start your score and go all the way to the other, about an inch, so it's going to look like this. See where the score line is? Just about an inch from the bottom. It doesn't have to be exact, it's going to... Okay. Kind of fold them in half to keep that end flat so it's going to make a handle kind of like this and if the handle curves a little bit that'll be cool so it'll make a handle like this now if you have a edger you can um, like the half circle punch on the edge you can round off your handle edges or just cut them or use a punch or whatever to give a little design on the edge of your handle. Like that. Just gives it a little piece. Then using your favorite punch we're going to punch holes in the ends of our handle. So, and then on, on the side you're going to punch a hole on each side two on each side, so um, I just eyeball it rather than measure it. If you're a stickler for measurement, go ahead and measure it. Okay. 
Okay, and to measure the other side, I kind of push it down and kind of eyeball it there too. You can even use your a little fancier punch for this, but it just needs to get a hole in it so we can put our bread through. Okay, there we go. Now to finish it off, we just need to choose our brads that we want to use. See what colors I got in here. I've got brads from a collection over the years. Got some pink ones here. Maybe I'll just use those. They're kind of pretty. Your handle can go one of two ways. You can put it on like this. So there's a handle this way. Or you can do it on each side. And that white one there. There's some white ones. Flip it up and over. This is a great project to do with a class. I did one last week with a group of gals and they loved it. So there's that. And then we just have to do the other side. set. So there you go. This is what it ends up looking like. Cameras get a little quirky there. So here we go. Now, I've seen some samples that have added on to it. Some I put a ribbon around the bottom. That adds a nice little uh, additional touch to it. You can also put a little pocket on there and if you're giving it, you're going to use it to, to put cards as a gift or something like that. You can put a little pocket on there that can hold some stamps. So it makes a really nice little gift basket. And like I said, if you wanted, you can you can squeeze in the sides and make it and square it off so it looks square rather than kind of round either way you want to go. Isn't that cute? Such a simple idea and it really doesn't take much cardstock and it's something that even um, even easy crafters can do. Even first just beginning to learn crafters can do it. I wanted to show you also some cards that I've made with using this suite using the stamp sets and die cut sets and the embossing folder. So that's this, this stuff here. Here's one. I don't know if you can see the emboss on that. Let's see if I can get it up there to show you. Um, it's embossed the front of the cardstock and then just added some of the flowers and, and layered with different um, ornamental pieces there. Makes a beautiful suite. And these, these are using the in colors, so except this is Misty Moonlight, but this is the in color ink. How about something like this? Isn't that pretty? Use the, um, the, the um, embossing folder to do the background there. Let's see, I think I'm in my own way here. My fingers and everything. 
and I just used a little dimensional to, to hold it closed there and I stamped the greeting on the back so that someone may want to just set it up and just have a pretty to look at. Pretty, another pretty basic card, just using some leftover things I had punched out or I had uh, cut out. Using the, I just love this paper, it's so pretty. And here's another one, it's using the, the tan on the front. The tan goes well with the misty moonlight paper. And this was taking the wreath, let me show you the wreath card. This is one using the wreath cut out. The wreath cuts out a great big wreath, and so you can use it as a wreath. Like that. Just with the paper or wreath and a few pieces, and you got a card. Or I took the wreath and I uh, tore it apart and just used parts of it for floral arrangements. And then some of the DSP strips, you know how we always come up with those little strips? We can use them to accent our cards. Here's another one using the, um, I wish it showed that background better, the embossing better, but there you go. It's using the new in color blues and our little butterfly embellishment. And then one more, using the Rainbow Boots card, some of the DSP, the background card stock, and just the sky's the limit. So much you can do with it. So I hope that you enjoy it and find it a set that you love to work with and have fun the rest of your day. Thank you.